Okay, so welcome back to this next video on uh, the calcium camelogenin dependent kinase 2 enzyme. So we've seen how um, calcium camelogenin uh, dependent kinase 2 enzymes form these large oligomers where 12 uh, calcium camelogenin dependent kinase 2 enzymes come together uh, to form this complex. We've also seen how um, an individual uh, CAM kinase 2 enzyme can be activated by a calcium camelogenin complex binding to its regulatory domain and blocking that from acting as a pseudo substrate and blocking the active site of the kinase domain. We've then seen how uh, if you have two neighbor neighboring CAM kinase 2 enzymes in the oligomer of CAM kinase 2, uh, which are both activated by uh, calcium camelogenin dependent kinases, then they can autophosphorylate one another. They can phosphorylate the threonine 286 residue, which is in uh, the regulatory domain. Uh, and basically, even if the calcium camelogenin complex now falls off, uh, the regulatory sub, uh, domain will remain uh, out of the active site, and therefore the CAM kinase 2 enzyme will remain active. Right, okay, um, so uh, now what we want to see is what does, what's the point of this autophosphorylation? Well, basically, if we plot a graph like so, then, uh, and we plot time, uh, we plot against time, and we plot the calcium signal, then we might get that calcium concentration goes up like something like that. Okay, so we have a calcium spike. Now, when calcium spikes up, what will happen is you'll form lots of calcium camelogenin uh, dependent kinase, uh, sorry, you'll form lots of calcium camelogenin complexes, and that will mean that you activate lots of these uh, cam kinase 2 enzymes. Then, if you activate, if you, if calcium concentration is high enough, then uh, you are going to start getting neighbors which are both, which both have calcium camelogenin complexes bound to them. And I want to, I want to stress that only neighbours can phosphorylate each other, and they can only phosphorylate each other if they've both got, well, sorry, this one can only phosphorylate this one if it's got a calcium camelogenin complex bound to it. Okay, so uh, if you've got calcium concentration rising high enough in the cell, then you will start to get neighbours uh, which are both uh, both have calcium camelogenin complex bound to them, and therefore they can autophosphorylate one another. And then they will remain active after, even after um, the, um, even after the calcium goes down. So basically, if we now plot on top of this calcium camelogenin um, co dependent kinase two activity, then it will look something like this. It will completely outlive the calcium spike. So this is cam kinase. 2 activity here. Okay, so um, the activity of this enzyme can completely outlive the calcium spike, but I want to stress something. It can only outlive the calcium spike if this autophosphorylation occurs. And in order for this autophosphorylation to occur, you need to make enough calcium calmodulin complexes that you will, s that by probability and chance, you will just happen to have two neighboring uh, cam kinase 2 enzymes in this oligomer, which are both uh, being activated by calcium calmodulin complexes. If you don't have two neighbors both activated, uh, then you're not going to get this um, this um, autophosphorylation, and you won't get this continuation in the activity of CAM kinase 2 uh, once the cal uh, calcium calmodulin complexes have dissociated, which is when the calcium signal terminates, basically. So if you only raise calcium level high enough that maybe only one of these, um, one of the CAM kinase 2 enzymes in the entire oligomer actually gets activated, then that's not going to lead to uh, autophosphorylation because all of its neighbors are basically um, inactive still and don't have calcium calmodulin um, bound to them. So you need quite a big calcium signal to actually get this activation. How big? Uh, to get this autophosphorylation and this outliving of uh, the signal of the calcium. Okay, how big? Well, that depends again on, um, on the length of this linker region. 
Remember I told you if the linker region is very, very short, then it's very difficult for the calcium camogenin complexes to gain access to the regulatory domain because it's very compactly held close to this hub region, basically. Whereas if the linker region is very, very long, then it's much easier for the calcium camogenin complexes to gain access. So basically, in order to get... Um, enough calcium calmodulin complexes to bind to the uh, cam kinase 2 enzymes that you actually have neighbors uh, neighbors which both have calcium calmodulin complexes bound to them uh, it's going to be much easier to do that when the linker region uh, is long basically i.e. you'll need a lower concentration of uh, calcium in the cytoplasm to get this autophosphorylation when the linker is long and when the linker is short you'll need a much higher concentration of calcium camogenin complexes to get neighbors which both have calcium camogenin complexes bound to them and that will mean that you'll need a much higher concentration of calcium so how um, how much calcium you need to have in order to get this uh, effect that the cam kinase 2 activity outlives the calcium signal uh, will depend on how long that linker region of the uh, cam kinase 2 enzyme is okay so this will look like this this graph will look like this when calcium when the calcium spike was large enough to um, uh, to raise calcium calmodulin uh, complex concentration so that it was high enough that you would get neighbors uh, both with calcium calmodulin complexes bound to them. So if the calcium concentration uh, rose to much lower levels, so let me show you another graph, let's say it only went something like that, then in that case the cam kinase activation would um, would um, terminate too when the calcium signal terminated because what would happen is you would get some calcium calmodulin complexes binding to the uh, cam kinase 2 regulatory domains but you wouldn't have enough of them uh, that uh, you'd be likely to get neighbors which both had calcium calmodulin complexes bound to them so you might get you know you might get two of the uh, enzymes in this whole oligomer uh, with uh, calcium calmodulin complex is bound to them, but it might be this one, and then maybe one down here, and they're not capable of autophosphorylating each other. So in order to get the autophosphorylation, you need neighbors with calcium calmodulin uh, complexes bound to them, and um, that requires high levels of calcium calmodulin to be in with a chance of achieving that, basically, and that requires high levels of calcium. Okay, right, so now finally, what's the point of cam kinase 2 activity outliving the calcium signal well it changes very much so the function of the cam kinase 2 because let's say we have a protein target here for cam kinase 2 enzyme i let's say it's going to phosphorylate this tail here well often what you find is that the phosphorylation sites of the cam kinase 2 enzymes are the same place where calcium calmodulin complexes bind. So, when calcium is present in the cell, i.e. during the calcium signal, you will have calcium calmodulin complexes bound to this domain which you were going to phosphorylate with the cam kinase 2 enzyme. So, that will stop the cam kinase 2 from being able to phosphorylate that. But once the calcium signal goes, then this cam kinase 2 um, complex will, uh, well, the calcium in the calci um, calcium calmodulin complex will dissociate, and that will mean this will return to apocalmodulin, and basically it will break off. Okay, so this is going to break off and return to apocalmodulin here. Okay, so uh, then what that means is that this domain is re-exposed and the cam kinase 2 enzyme can now phosphorylate that domain so activity certain activities of the cam kinase 2 enzyme cannot happen whilst the calcium signal is still present but they can happen once the calcium signal has terminated so that adds an interesting um, interesting aspect to this calcium signaling because if you only get a small level of calcium then the cam kinase activity will be terminated 
uh, where, with the calcium signal, basically. So you won't ever get this function of CAM kinase 2, which is the phosphorylation of these domains which are covered up by calcium calmodulin when the calcium signal is present. But if calcium signaling is very high, if the intracellular calcium spike gets very high, then what will happen is it will activate uh, CAM kinase 2 activity to um, continue even after the calcium signal has terminated. And then this enzyme will be able to phosphorylate those domains which were not available during uh, the actual calcium signal.